Horse Back Pain, Part 1. Right, well today I'd like to talk about the subject of back pain, and more specifically back pain in horses. Now, the good news is over the last several decades, where prior to that there wasn't a huge amount of interest, the interest has grown exponentially to the situation we have now where we have numerous therapists, therapeutic modalities, and along with that, therapeutic languages. So the downside, if there is, is the fact that there's, or most of these modalities are used by people who keep to their own religion, if I may put it that way. And if you're the type of person who likes to try this, try that, it can become quite confusing. So for all intents and purposes today, I will try and at least simplify and explain what they are trying to treat. So for that reason, firstly, we'll look at pain. Pain obviously exists as a warning, you know, uh, stove's hot, don't touch, joints being injured, don't go picking up a bucket of concrete, etc. So there's a reason for it. Now three types of pain in the main, there are others, but the main three types. First, nociceptive pain, which is that traumatic and immediate pain, which, you know, or uh, this sort of thing, will result immediately in this, what we refer to as nociceptive pain. Uh, this pain, importantly, is felt within the tissue that has been traumatized. It is immediate and, and is immediate by way of being transmitted through particular nerve endings referred to as nociceptive or pain nerve endings. Send a message to the brain. Obviously, uh, it's immediate for good reason. And how do we treat that? Well, we get rid of these. Very simple. The second type of pain is what we refer to as inflammatory pain. Now, with these two situations we just looked at, following that immediate trauma and immediate pain, we can get swelling and heat, or what we refer to as inflammation. Now, within that inflammation, chemicals are being released and produced. And it is these chemicals that then go to the nerve endings and trigger the nerve endings. This pain obviously is longer standing. Again, it's there for a reason. You know, it's there to guard against us using that particular area or further traumatizing it. So it has a reason. At the same time, it can be quite uncomfortable. Now, how do we treat that pain? Well, primary treatment would be, of course, to heal that injured area. And therefore, there's no inflammation there then. And of course, there is no perception of pain. However, we also use symptomatic treatment. And symptomatic treatment would be to try and reduce the quantity or number of those chemicals. And we, for that reason, we use agents referred to as anti-inflammatory medication, which will block or reduce the production of those particular chemicals. And therefore, the amount getting to the nerve endings and sending messages to the brain are reduced. And we feel more comfortable. We feel less pain. Importantly, again, that pain will be perceived within the traumatized tissue. So if it's a sprained wrist, we feel pain in the wrist. If it's a knock on the head, we feel pain where the knock is. Okay, that's inflammatory pain. The third type of pain I want to discuss is referred to as neuropathic or nerve pain. Now, what is neuropathic or nerve pain? It is pain that arises from trauma to a nerve. And what sort of trauma can we have to a nerve? Well, nerve is ostensibly, to understand it, is a very elastic organ and very mobile. Why is it elastic and mobile? Because it accompanies our limbs, it accompanies our anatomy. And if we're to be able to do this, then the nerves must accommodate by stretching, slidings, slipping, sliding, stretch, recoil. So 
<coughs> very mobile structure now, if anything occurs to reduce that mobility of the nerve, its ability to move around, then that will result in the perception of pain or nerve pain. So what type of traumas can we have? Thank you. <laughs> traumas to nerves. Well, the obvious one, we could have a severed nerve. Obviously that needs, it may be surgically attended to, but it needs to heal over quite some considerable time to what extent it can heal. More commonly with nerves, we will have undue pressure applied to a nerve and typically in the human situation with a ruptured disc we can have disc material pushing on it. Okay. Um, probably more commonly in horses what we will have and, and the spine, the spinal cord at least, is a good example of a, it's a very big nerve in a sense. It is obviously composed of millions of nerves but it's a big nerve now. In the human species, its ability to stretch and recoil uh, is through some nine centimetres of range, and it is important. If, it, if we don't have that, well, we can't do this, okay, or this. The horse, I'm not sure it's been measured, but obviously it would be considerable, consider particularly given the range of movement through which the neck can move. So this type of trauma to nerves can follow in fact, trauma to tissues surrounding the nerve, and quite often that is the case. So if, for instance, we have something like whiplash or a horse falls over a, a jump and the joints, vertebral joints, which surround the spinal cord, are damaged and as a result they stiffen or the joints stiffen, they lose range, then that will have a corresponding effect on the nervous system that is accompanying it and that will as a result, have some expressions of nerve pain. Right, now, neural pain or neuropathic pain, important, two important things to realize. One, where the first two types of pain we talked about are perceived within the structures, neuropathic pain is not. It is always referred. It may re be referred to something not too far away, but often it's referred as in neck pain or neck injury in humans may result in hand pain or finger pain, uh, sciatic typically, uh, foot pain, uh, pain in the calf, pain varying dermatomes or areas of the leg, all quite some considerable distance from. So it's referred and I, I, I remind you of that because too often uh, people will go to the area where pain is perceived and say that is the problem area and it's usually not, it's usually quite some distance. Now, exactly what is nerve pain? Well, unlike the other two, nerve pain doesn't use, as a rule, doesn't use nociceptors, the, the normal pain channels. What happens with nerve pain is that normal pressure, touch, temperature receptors that are, exist right through our tissues for obvious reasons become hypersensitized in specific areas, that in the areas of referral. And in those areas, so for instance, uh, if we said that was a normal sensation or perception of sensation, and when we did that it felt more like that, that would be an upgraded sensation. And this is basically what occurs, or we might have that being upgraded to that. So, a normal stimulus can give the perception within the brain of an abnormal or upgraded stimulus. Um, similarly, the application of ice may feel as though it's burning. So, the difference here is that we are looking at normal receptors that, yes, have changed. So, importantly, it, it's not trans, neuropathic pain is not transmitted through, through these normal nerve systems. It is not part of an inflammatory process and therefore treating this particular pain with anti-inflammatory medication is a waste of time. You know, these nil response. Well, how do we treat it? Again, looking at primary symptomatic symptomatic treatment would be to treat the pain, not necessarily the injury, 
and of course there are many therapeutic modalities which, which aim to do this and obviously they will go to the areas where the sensitivity is altered and using sometimes pressure techniques, massage techniques, stimulatory techniques, all sorts of techniques will try and reduce that perception, that altered sensitivity, which is fantastic. Uh, the issue may be that if having done that, the primary problem, which may be well away from where the anatomy is being treated, does not correct. If it subsequently corrects, then fine. You have a basically a long-term reduction pain. But if not, after a period of some time, that pain sensation will return, that autosensitivity will return, and certainly can be retreated. Primary treatment would be going to the area which may well be near the spine, or maybe spinal joints that have lost range, stiffness, etc., and mobilizing that tissue in which these nerves need to slip, slide, recoil, as we talked about. Once that nerve is able to move without undue pressure through range and anatomy that it should, then the perception of neuropathic pain will be relieved in a long-term sense. Thank you, and now we'll quickly have a look at the species we were talking about. Neuropathic pain is importantly one not inflammatory pain and therefore will not respond to common anti-inflammatory agents such as butazolidin or flunixin. And two, is always referred to tissues away from the primary site of trauma. Now go to horseback pain, part two. For other information on neuropathic pain in the horse, go to drtomahern.com.